So I'll get a couple holes. I'll play a few holes, not a couple holes, a few holes on turn 12 with the automatic off crash calculator. Um, just so you can see again uh, more more play with it, more live play using the calculator. And maybe along the way, we'll run into some situations where I can uh, explain uh, some of the things that I'm doing. So here we go. Uh, picked up a match pretty fast there. Okay. Well, I didn't see the hole. I keep forgetting to look. Oh, okay. So this time I'm going to use uh, the wind model because I want to get a, sp a specific bounce. So I see a 10, I see 30, 136. So 51, 7 degree pull. Full on extension. So I don't want to bounce too aggressive. I want to try and get my bounce right into rough, just like that. So I see that's about four and a half. So that's what I'm gonna do. 51. Seven degree pull. So I always start the target line. I'm go 51. I'll go 51 ish and then pull. I'll push my four rings. <laughs> I guess I'm pushing here. Oh, I'll push a little too much. A little too much. So I'm gonna go over the rough. Push a little too much. <laughs> Spun around a little bit. So I may be stuck in the rough. <coughs> that, that worked out okay. So, that <laughs> just got spun around. I never had that happen before. But, um,. Ideally, yeah, we bounce in the rough or you don't want to go a little, you don't want to get too far because you might get stuck on the, the rough if you uh, miss the first rough bump, which I did because I put, put too much rings. I was supposed to go for slightly less than four rings. And I think I went five. So I want about a ring and a half too much on my push. But I'm in an okay position. Now we're coming to a shot that I, um, which I'm kind of getting a theory, <laughs> a theory I guess, for. It's when you go up and over um, a hill, for whatever reason, for golf clash. Um, whether the other side is higher or lower, or it plays at like minus ten, minus fifteen. So I wanna. I'm gonna try that. Um, oh yeah. So I'm gonna go minus 15. See where I am. Plus or max, I say that's about 10. Maybe about 15 I'm gonna go. Big win, so. Ah, uh, that's about 25, 163. And I put back minus 15 with the B52, 16.24. I'm trying to aim for that. Well, this is actually a good position to be in. The secondary guy, I want to get it up there. Let me far show you the position I'm trying to get to. Four, seven, eight. Eleven, eight. Oh man, I hit great. Might be okay though. So I'm trying to get to right. Ah, oh, went way too far. Then I was way too far. Might be on the left side of the hole. Left side of the hole. Yeah, I'm trying to aim for. I'm trying to aim for. I'll show it after. <laughs> what spot I'm trying to aim for. <clears throat> so you can see, I, I actually needed six. Uh, six grids. Six green squares of a uh, ball guide offset. Around there. I mean, as a general guide. And yeah, that one, I didn't do much at all. And maybe about mine. Hmm. I don't know, maybe this minus 15. I gotta see where I landed.
Perfect shot. So after this hole is over, I'll show you. I'll show you the spot that I was trying to hit, <laughs> which I badly missed. And I can look at them. Let me take a screenshot of. Uh... You won't be able to see me do this, but I want to take a clip so I can reference it later. What settings I had. Shoot up. Put on my whole notes list. Mm, I call this the L ending patch. 515 or 1588. So this is 15. This would be the hardest one for me. So my, uh, my Titan. Two, two side spin. I don't know. I find, I, see, I want to be where he is. I don't like to be to the right of that. Well, maybe a ring right or ring. I just, yeah, I don't like that because I'm not sure. <laughs> it just seems like that landing spot is not level. And so it tends to kick your ball to the left. If you move off just a little bit left, it's more level. So I'm going to try and hit the left portion of that landing pad. But what that means is my ball guide is going to be about a grid and a half off. In fact, I try to line up about a grid and a half off in the like green, green grid, green square column. But then I have to pull back so far to the right from my ball guide offset. I don't have enough spin sometimes, so. Oh, he landed way far. That um, I gotta put a little bit of opposite right curl. So 1588. Line up, see what the angle is. 45, 155, a decent size win. So my pull is 16 at seven degree angle. 16 rings, so see, I've got a 7, line up with that, right down the light square, be on the left hand side. And then I'm gonna go here, but I need to pull that 5 or 7, but even a little more than that, so that's okay. I'm gonna keep it there and go curl. So 16 and 7. 16 and 7, go with that. I don't need to put some right curl. Okay, I put right curl, put half a ball of right curl. Oh, and I hit baby right. Great shot. Actually, I might be okay. I might be okay. Oh man, <laughs> maybe not. Hey, why? Oh, so my god, that was a horrible shot. Am I great? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I, oh, I still want two bad shots. Right. Okay. <laughs> Pretty sad. So maybe, yeah, yeah, honestly, maybe that one I do. <laughs> too much curl. A little too much curl on that one. Okay, really quick, I want to uh, take a peek and show you where I was trying to aim at. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that. Um, yeah, let me go try and get to it. Let me see here. Let's see if I got it. So, um, oh yeah, sorry, no money. So let me see where we are going to. Let me get you to that. Let's see here. Okay, so here we go. So, it's 15. Let me show oh, you. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do that again. So where I was trying to hit. First off, oh, I didn't need to save my set. I got it right here. So let's see where I'm. Hmm. So uh, my bullseye, the center, is slightly forward of that shadow. So maybe we can key in on that to see if my minus 15 was um, way too under adjusted and my theory is off about hitting it up and over a hill. Four. Hmm. Is that oh, hang on here. Let me get rid of that so we don't have to deal with it. 
put, put, put that noise. Okay. Uh, and then let me go back there. Okay, so let's do that. So, let's see where I land. And let's get, oh, shoots. But there's someone to see Ford. So let's see where I hit. So, look at that. So, I hit. That's pretty much where I was. So, I think minus 15 uh, is a pretty valid elevation. <laughs> My theory is still holding that, um, yeah, you go up and over a hill. It's just weird. It's, um, yeah, it just turns into negative elevation. That's my theory anyway. And uh, we'll see where we go. Okay, so if again. Mm. Sorry, it's a little hard to get there. So where I'm trying to get to, if I can show it. Oh, you can't see my pointer. Okay, well, I guess I just have to describe it. It's, um. See where my ball is? It's on a dark green square, and then there's one more green square before it in the same column with that a horizontal line going there. Well, not that one, but the one before it. So two green squares over. Uh, that's what I was trying to hit. That's the line that gets you to the hole. But yeah, I definitely <laughs> overshot it. All right, so that's enough for that. Okay, let's get to another one. And let's start another game. I definitely should have not won that. <laughs> Pretty lucky. Hey, yeah, resetting for the next hole. There's certain people you play, <laughs> you just can't win. I don't know why this guy can't. Ah, man, I have a hard time with him. Not sure why. So, yeah. Ready. Yeah, perfect. 15-5. 5 14-5. Next, uh, one left. I want to aim just a little down the right side. Well, maybe this one I'm gonna drop to the left because it's such a crosswind. 14.5. 14.5. That's my 10. 14 and a half. Just basic straight pull. Oh, nah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna harm me. I'll just be farther from the hole. a little farther left than I want it to be, but that's fine. Timing doesn't feel too good today. <laughs> These first two shots. I, have it, I didn't play at all before this, so... Um, just started to, brought, to um, record this for you guys. Uh, first hole was without any other warm-up or anything. I don't, I don't know if that really matters. If I warmed up, I'd probably still play that. So loose it is, guy. So, oh, straight into the wind too. Okay, so I kind of like to do it this way. So I got one, I just call it one, oh, shoots, 150, 10, one, and I'm gonna pull back uh, the five rings. So, 11, four, six, pull back my five rings. That'll be okay. 
eight over four six. Ten. Zoom out of four and I'll blast it. One, two, three, four. Oh, I break left. Great the double gray left. Stay out. Stay out of the rough. Stay out of the rough. Okay. And that's why in this whole, um, I don't, <laughs> I don't even aim for the hole. I just want to be between the trap and the fairway. <laughs> that's all I always try for. End up to the right side of the green. I'm never even trying to hit the green. I'm just trying to end up on the right side of the green. It's, uh, yeah, it's not like I'm going to hit perfect all the time. And this hole will suck your ball into the trap or into the rough. Like that. So. Yep, so I'm level 15 because this one is just a little high. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna not and no and bring your roll. I'm just gonna play my own roll. It's close enough. So if I get a good ball guy. I don't want to be there, that's for sure. Lee, this might be a little harder than I thought. Son of my god. Okay, I'm sorry, I can do it. So I got a look. So I did 10 rings at 7 miles an hour. So this is 12. I'm about 10, about 10 rings. I'm about 10 green squares away. 12. This is 7. It's going to be there. right there. Right around there. Slightly to the right of the pin, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't, I don't understand why how people, um, so many, and all the really good players do it. I never ask, I should ask. Um, but they make adjustments. They pull the rings, they zoom in on their ring, on the inbringer or whatever, and they make an adjustment. But they never scan for where they are. So I don't know what they're doing. Is it just a general movement? Oh, nice shot. <laughs> yep. The trend is continuing with him. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can change it. Okay, I'll call this the long kidney. Ooh, this is my tough one. Oh, no, that's okay. So this will be three. I'll call that. Um, 120, 153, and then 8. So 1257. 1257. So this one, what I do is uh, right to the hole. Just a little path. Ah, no, right. That was fine. Now I'm going to kick the ball guy for the wind to push it. <clears throat> 1257. Got to move. Got like that. So. My 10, I put two and a half for the bullseye. Okay. Hopefully I hit perfect. Hit perfect. perfect shot. And I should have hit my mark. And that's pretty good. So, <laughs> I guarantee he's gonna beat me. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. So yeah, I'm gonna have to cut this short. So maybe a couple of holes is good. I'll put some more holes up later. I'll play a little bit more. Yeah, it's dinner time on my side over here. So I'll finish this up. I guess I was wrong. Um, I'll stay if he wants to play another one. I don't want to run away from him, so. So, let's see here. Okay, no. Yeah, 
So yeah, I'm gonna just cut it short for here. Um, how long? Oh, it's only about 20 minutes. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I'll cover it in another um, video. But yeah, what I wanted to show is, um, I, sh I should have captured it, but I didn't, is um, uh, what I should have explained is that on the shot for people that haven't or, or seen or ever thought about using this calculator about these numbers uh, right here. So these numbers, um, what those numbers are is the pull angle that you should pull your shot at. So in, um, and if there's a user guide for this uh, calculator that you can read. I don't go into much explanation. One day I'll do a, uh, maybe an in-depth video on explaining why these pull angles are needed. Um, but basically it's because whenever you have a mix of crosswind and, and, and headwind tailwind, uh, they're treated differently. So the tailwind has a force being, uh, I don't want to call it, I don't want to get too physics on here or too sciencey on here, but um, the, wind, the crosswind is pushing the ball. Uh, with a certain amount of uh, force, force, and the headwind and tailwind in golf flash is um, also pushing it with force, but even more than what it's supposed to be. They add in a little extra. Maybe that is the Magnus effect they talk about. I don't know. It just everybody knows if you're in headwind or tailwind, you need to pull more rings versus um, a pure crosswind. So if you're using the basic ring model without a wind direction model, you are, you're going to need to somehow compensate. You're going to pull more, you're going to add elevation to your um, calculation for your ring pull because you're, um, you know, you need more, but because there are those two differences, uh, creates a difference in the resulting wind direction, um, which I like to call the virtual wind angle. And I do mention that I think a lot of people when they hear that they think that's crazy talk <laughs> but it's there um, a lot of the uh, and I've made a post about this that there are a lot of uh, the, you don't see it until you get to tour 11 or 212 tour 12 the higher tours but it's always there it's even in the lower tour, tour 1 through through 10 um, but you just don't see it because you're you're pull in those winds in the low number of winds is so short the distance the actual distance that you're making your pull um if it if you're pulling in a different direction from the virtual wind angle you so you're pulling 12 o'clock but the virtual wind angle is saying actually you need to be seven degrees off of the 12 o'clock angle because you're not pulling that long a distance you don't really see it your ball is going to land differently than what you expect but when you're playing in T11 and T12, and these pulls are long, like I'm gonna pull a 15 ring APOC, um, and the rings are big out there. So uh, uh, a 10 ring, a 10 ring, let's say, uh, a 10 ring and bringer. <laughs> let's go with a, a foreign, because big rings, right? But it's close. It's only about a hundred, hundred-ish yards away. Fifty to forty, about a hundred. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, to one thirty-five. Oh, I take that back. Yeah, up to 90, 45 to ninety. Forty-five to ninety yards for your thorn. So it's close to you, um, but in golf clash, the rings extend. They grow. They grow as you go. So as you get out, and they shrink to zero at your ball. And the farther you get out, the rings get bigger and bigger. So your thorn at 90 versus your eight pocket, like 240 yards or 200 yards away, that ring is big. That 10 rings are pretty big rings if you're to measure it as far as uh, yardage goes. So a 10 ring pull of your eight pocket <coughs> is very different from a 10 ring pull of a thorn. Even though your thorn uh, rings are gonna be bigger and you have your eight pocket almost at a hundred at a hundred accuracy sorry I had to cough there so 
just the distance you're pulling at the APOC compared to a short iron um, is very different. And in the higher winds of TLN. So you start to see, and, and your shootouts in TLN and T12R, mostly with drivers, uh, are very tip of the range of your um, your longest woods. So you know, that's why a lot of people play cat versus a sniper on T11 and T12. And because of that difference, as you pull at that different angle at a seven degrees, um, if you're put 12 o'clock, but the actual virtual wind is seven degrees, the actual difference starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger as you make these long pulls. So um, the more advanced players, the more advanced players that compensate for it. They may not know that's why they're doing it, but they'll generally pull at a 12 o'clock angle and then they'll um, either they're OP, say if they're going to tailwind, they'll pull a 12 o'clock pull and then they'll, uh, then they'll, oh, well, actually they would probably need to, they need to underpower actually for that. If they're going to headwind, they'll pull at a 12 o'clock angle and then they need to OP just to um, correct the angle. Uh, a lot of them actually just instead of opening up being they'll, they'll do a jerry ring movement they'll pull at the 12 in a say in a tailwind and then they'll pull back straight towards the tee or they'll in the headwind they'll pull at the 12 o'clock angle and they pull away from the tee um, because what they're doing what they don't realize they're doing they're one they're compensating for the more length of pull you need for the wind but they're also realigning their pull more in line with uh, the direction of the virtual wind angle so what this calculator does with these numbers is, um, and it's hard, how are you gonna tell how many rings to Jerry? How are you gonna tell how many rings to, or how much OP or uh, under par to do? So this calculator just kind of tells you, if you pull at a seven degree angle and you pull at 12.5 rings, you're gonna hit your spot. Um, and that's basically what these pull numbers mean. It, it, it's, you, have, you should have to pull these angles this number to be able to hit the spot that you're aiming for but uh, again I'll, I'll make a longer video um, that will kind of explain uh, how I came up with this and anyway, um, the thought behind it and why it's, why it really is there uh, okay that's it so thanks for watching um, I'll come back later and uh, I'll add some more recordings thanks